Hi everyone, it's Jerry. Let's have a look at a game from the 1960 Leipzig Olympiad, a round eight game. Bobby Fischer has the black pieces in this one. His opponent is Rene Letelier Martner, international master and five-time Chilean champion. He won that title in 1957, 59, 60, 64, and finally in the same year Fischer would become world chess champion 1972 so there's some nice instructional value from this brief game uh, if you're uncomfortable facing an opponent who likes to amass a big pawn center right now fisher's facing uh, three white pawns and soon as we'll see in this game a fourth is invited if you're unsure how to cope with uh, such an approach such an approach approach by one of your opponents i think there are a lot of useful tips packed into this one game how exactly should you undermine it okay castles in this game this is an invitation for you know <laughs> fisher is inviting white to enter his house with this fourth move castles uh, not the most common move most common is d6 which cuts out uh, this e5 move. e5 is bad in this case because white would have to make an uncomfortable move after queen takes queen. Right? You go on castled, knight g4, black is already winning, or you demote the knight. Neither is fun for white. And this pawn already experiences some, pro some problems. Right? Can it even be maintained, right? You try to defend, you can maybe knock it out. Okay, bad news for white, meeting d6 with e5. So, Fisher castles in this game. White jumps at the opportunity to play e5. Why not? Pawn on e5 can't be captured. Let's do it. The knight has to go back. This is what Fisher was uh, welcoming with uh, castles on move four. Can't go to the edge. That's going to be painful. Knight will be dead. So, Back rank, the knight goes. F4. So here we are. What's the approach? We're staring at four big white pawns. Step one is what? Step one is to view this furthest advanced pawn, the one that's in your house, as uh, an invader. We don't, we don't want that guy in our house. So some pressure on it with not just any pawn, the d6 pawn. You know, we could we could put pressure on it with d6 or uh excuse me f6 or d6 d6 we're going with the less committal of the two why is this one less committal well we're not making our king side uh weakened right we're not opening up a diagonal towards our king maybe at a later stage f6 can surface but right now far and away best is d6 we're immediately putting pressure on the e5 pawn some de uh, development by white with bishop to e3. This does uh, lend some support to the white queen in the event of black now releasing the tension, which is to say capture on e5. White will be able to take with the d-pawn. And if we have the exchange of queens in this case, you'll note it's not, uh, it's not as uncomfortable a decision for white anymore, right? You don't have to go with the knight or the queen. You have the convenient recapture and deployment of the rook on an open file. Okay. Note the tension in this game, the timing of certain captures. Not this just yet. First, we're undermining the center further. C5 hits. It appears that uh, white, uh, excuse me, black doesn't have enough support for that. Something you need to keep in mind is uh, probably after, <laughs> if you're going to go with Fisher's approach and play castles on move four, you probably have to have in the back of your mind that, okay, white's going to have a big pawn center, potentially, and I need to be okay with variations that invest one of my own pawns in order to dismantle my opponent's central structure. I may have to give up a pawn in order to mobilize my pieces or demote 
my opponent's pieces or break up this big pawn on e5. That's what happens in this game. Fisher is, is okay with giving up a pawn. c5 on board. d takes c5. Uh, move played in the game. Uh, you can also go with this one. Uh, you can respond as... You can respond to these two moves in the same way. Knight c6. So if this one... White is giving up the e5 pawn for the d6 pawn, and we can continue to develop. There's now going to be a, a new focal point, d4, now that the e5 pawn isn't here. And this is really problematic for white, right? As an example, if you try to just win the pawn on e6, this is already winning for black. Look at the development. White king is in the center, open e-file. It's going to be an accident on d4, maybe a fork. Knight d5 is no problem. Queen e6. No forks on c7. Bad news for white to approach it in this way. Okay, in this game it's d takes c5. We don't capture in either direction because we we care we care about our queen. Knight c6. Development. C takes d6. E takes d6. And white plays knight to e4. So there are some variations here I'd like to share. The first one is, well, if white captures like this, black is considered winning already. Uh, look at the development, right? This, this pawn that was boxing out the knight is no longer there after this capture. The knight will gladly recapture. Now there's this. Look at the minor pieces. Beautiful. Huge lead in development, well worth the pawn investment. Okay. Knight f3 is another possibility. How exactly to approach this one? Initially, I thought to myself, uh, I, I believe the first thought that crossed my mind when I was, you know, playing around with the different moves of this game is, well, if the knight goes here, can we not go ahead and capture on this square? And that's not true because we would have white initiating this capture. Now the knight has to uh, run back to recapture, and then this is not a good variation at all for black. So, no capture here. If this move, bishop g4, I thought, was a move to you know undermine the knight, but considered even better is to immediately go to e6. And now that the queen is defended, we're now ready to go ahead and chop away on this e5 square. Um, so just something worth noting. This is a very common move you may see. Instead of the move played in the game, I'm moving an already developed piece. So this is already kind of iffy uh, for white. This is where white starts to go astray. He has, a, he has an eye on this d6 square. From here, we have bishop f5, and the reply is knight to g3. If white goes ahead and captures on d6, we would go ahead and capture the knight. If pawn takes pawn, this is inviting rook to e8. That's bad news. It's reading as a minus 7 already. Uh, should not be afraid of this past pawn. This is... This pawn isn't going anywhere. White's probably going to get checkmated in a handful of moves, it feels, with uh, the development of the black pieces. Um, if queen takes knight in this position, you can go ahead and exchange queens and then pick up one of the two pawns you're down, capturing on b2. But considered best here, and I think this is the uh, one, one of the more instructive lines to uh, share with you, is... and, and um, a nice approach in this in this case is to duck the queen exchange. Black has his sights set on this king. Uncastled, this position is opening up. Let's keep the queens on. Uh, queen to e8. Pretty slick move. What is it doing exactly? Well, avoids the queen exchange, opens up this uh, rook d8 move. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a nice tempo against the queen. And also there's some pin 
Yeah, on the on the e file. Pawn or bishop, one of the two is is going to be pinned. After knight f3, for example, how do we approach this? Well, now we go ahead with f6. And look at this position is cracked wide open. You can't take here. The bishop would fall with check. Um, what is f6 doing? Trying to get rid of e5 so that not only the bishop can see uh, further into the white position, uh, but also black wants to liberate the rook. Oftentimes it only takes a couple key pawn moves in order to mobilize pieces on the very squares they, they sit. The rook can be activated on f8 with just pawn play alone. That's what f6 is accomplishing here. You really don't need to go uh, any further here. They say e6 is best, rook d8, queen here, and then you get the pawn back. This is, <laughs> this is going to probably be very difficult for black to defend. And you know, you know what, let me just take it one move further. Still on this theme of undermining the white pawns, uh, the best move here is g5. <laughs> trying to pry open the f-file, or maybe uh, kick the knight to a not-so-great square. Okay, I've gone far enough. Uh, we don't have this capture on d6, but these are important structures. At least I want to provide a, a, at least some feel for how you can approach these different structures that may come about. So in the game, it's knight g3. We have this attack of the knight being met with a counterattack. The bishop falls back to e6. Was that worthwhile? Uh, was that worthwhile for black to play bishop to f5? And after knight to f6, you, you go back to e6? That is definitely worthwhile. Black has gained something there, right? What is that something? Well, the knight has been demoted. Is it better on g3 or e4? It's definitely better on e4. It's boxed out on g3, no great forward movements here. The best it could do is simply return to e4, so that is time well spent to go to f5, only after flushing the knight back to we go to e6. From here, knight f3. Once more, an opportunity for black to go ahead and capture on e5. This is considered best. It's not what Fisher goes forward with. I think he was probably still in this mindset of I'm going to keep queens on. I'm going hunting for your king. Um, you could go ahead and chop away on e5. What may be a reason for black to not go with this? Maybe it wasn't as clear to black, or maybe he didn't even want to see some, some variation where uh, the bishop can go to c5. Not saying in this exact position, but it may be slightly uncomfortable or complicated not a, not not as clear to black okay this is still very very good for black winning but the decision here not the capture on e5 instead queen c7 now black is ready to not only break down the strong pawn on e5 but we're avoiding the queen exchange from here queen b1 oddball uh, not so natural a move. This is supporting some f5 advance. Uh, you can support it by going to c2 or d3, but uh, maybe at some point, you know, the queen could be kicked away. Some timely knight b4 move. So, so she is at least a little bit more stable on b1, we might say. Okay, only at this point do we go ahead and capture on e5. That's met with f5. And the reply here is, I believe we can categorize e4 in this game as a clearance. Uh, the bishop wants to have an open view on the main diagonal. Uh, maybe a jumping point by the, the knight or the queen. It's a forceful move, that is for sure. Uh, but there was nothing wrong with going ahead and uh, capturing on f5 the sequence here, chopping away and simply developing that knight. That's on e8, and who knows where the queen goes, I don't know. Maybe here, 
and you could start driving the knight away. Okay, this is an excellent position for black. I think uh, one of the continuations here was knight f5. Looks kind of weird. Isn't that knight hanging? You could pick it back up in this way. And this is an excellent position for black, winning position. It's a huge square. On d3, you can't castle kingside so easily, and if you go queenside, that bishop's going to probably kill you. Okay. Nothing wrong with chopping away on f5 in short. From here, though, it's e4. Pawn takes bishop, pawn takes knight. G takes f, and this next move I really like. Um, maybe it's because I... I'm more positionally minded with the game. Uh, next move here is f5. Um, it seems it seems on the surface, okay, isn't this nice? You you just you capture on e6, you win a pawn, you open a file. Why did Fisher not uh, play that move? Well, f5 takes into account the e4 square. That's the first thing that sticks out to me. Um, maybe right next to that is the fact that black keeps a very healthy kingside structure, a nice pawn island, uh, a nice secure pawn island of three. And tactically speaking, uh, tactically speaking, we have this threat, f4 with the fork. But uh, yeah, if I'm to assign a primary function behind b5, uh, f5, excuse me, it is to maintain control over the e4 square. And Black is essentially saying that this guy right here that's passed is uh, going to that is that is passed and uh, overextended will simply be conveniently recaptured. There's not going to be a way for white to really defend that pawn. Okay. The approach here is f4, stopping f4 by black. Knight f6. These next moves, we're just developing the pieces. Uh, this king, he's uncastled, but he's trying to, you know, provide some defense over the, the bishops that are on open files, uh, open e file. Rook to e1. Let's just pause right about here. I'll make one more move. Uh, in what way is black not better here? <laughs> uh, everything about this position is really beautiful. Perfect coordination. Uh, we look at the structures. That tips in black's favor. Two pawn islands versus how many? Three pawn islands. Dead knight on g3, no forward prospects. These guys do have some nice jumps. Um, already has a battery formed, a cornered rook. Not good news for white, however you slice it. And this, all of these factors do what? They help pave the way for uh, a final uh, flurry of tactics. What we have here is a, a position before submission type of approach. He's accumulated a lot of positional uh, positives. So, pop quiz, the only one of this game. Uh, can you spot Fisher's final sequence here? Feel free to pause the video. Okay, here we go. Rook takes bishop. Rook takes rook. Rook takes rook. King is being pulled out. It's a small investment. No dark square bishop for white. Uh, one final move. Can you spot it? Maybe pause the video once more from this position. See if you could spot this last move. Move 23. Here we go. Okay. Queen takes f4. And white resigns. <laughs> so a flashy finish. I'm glad Fisher wasn't uh, welcome in this, in this game to uh, having a queen exchange that was. Uh, sidestepped uh, at least a couple times, and it you know, paved the way for this flashy finish. Queen takes f4. Queen is poison. That would run into a checkmate in one. How about that? 
Um, any other options for the White King? If you don't want to walk into the main one. Uh, you have three. Let's not think too much about that one. The bishop falls with check. What about that? That's going to hurt too. We're going to get that bishop next move. And if the king goes here, the self pin. You can take advantage of that pin with the check. King here, the knight pounces. The bishop falls next. And if the king goes here, we have a check. King here, and then knight d4. Yeah, it's not hitting with check here, but it's taking full advantage now of this pinned bishop. And there's not a way to defend it. No queen d1, the knight has that one covered, so this one is toast, uh, however you slice it. So, um, Let's have a look at the tail of the tape on this one. Here we go, and we can see it's a pretty high quality game by Fisher. What do we have here? Aversenti pawn loss for Team White, 59, and Fisher is at 19. So, as usual, feel free to leave any feedback to this video in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe took a thing or two away. That's all for now. Take care. Bye.